having been a machinist for so long, you know, I've worked with like two different types of quality people and a lot of them I haven't gotten along with, but Travis is different. So, you know, the two types that I've seen in my career have been like, you know, I make this complicated part and I give it to the guy at the CMM and the first dimension he checks is wrong. He pulls the thing off the CMM, throws the, re- the report at me with just one dimension on it and says, well, that part's bad. Where the other type like Travis will look at the part as a whole and they'll say, hey, these two things are off and here's what I think your problem might be. So it kind of gives me, you know, a, a path forward to figure out what I have messed up either in my program or on my machine or in my tooling. So, you know, I like the quality guys that are willing to lend a helping hand and not just say, throw it back you know, at you. Yeah. yeah I mean, bad. you know, I guess pun intended, that's the only type of quality, quality guy. You got to have somebody who's, who's intentional about trying to, it's a team effort, right? I think, I think yes. sometimes it's, it's a tendency for quality to see themselves as isolated from the rest of the production totally. process. Right? Yeah, and, totally. and like, they're just this department of, of no, 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 as opposed to how can we get it done? How can we solve this problem that's together? Right. How can we do this as a team? And really, that's kind of a even a shout out back to Sean, right? He yeah. kind of taught me that. I can tell you, even when I was a machinist, I remember going in there and that guy would work with me. He'd run CMM reports. I'd be checking parts out on the floor. I'd come in, ask him what we might be wrong. How do we need to move this? And just that relationship, I think, really kind of helped me develop that notion of collaboration. That, helped, that's yeah, what it makes helps the whole good, company. Exactly. It's yeah. collaboration. If you're on Titans of CNC, our regular CNC machining, then you're looking at a shorter clip and the long form is at titans of cnc podcast so go check that out Mm. and how good is that like just having the background on in machining and then becoming a qa guy oh right it's It's invaluable 100 percent agreed you you, having to know what the struggle is like on the floor right you know because look machinists care about what they do i care about what i do you don't want to get parts wrong you know you want to get it right you want to do a good job and having a quality guy that can help guide you and help you along that way like i say invaluable absolutely completely agreed and if if you look at how he was you know having like he started the company because he loved the passion that was like on the website and he's like wow these guys are passionate about something that i care about and then he came in and then he was passionate about fixing things and helping things rise and 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 all of that and then he carried that right into inspection. So everything that you just said, Barry, is exactly who he is because he is a machinist. He does want to see the company thrive. He wants to be able to stand on a foundation of quality and understand that anything that's going out our door is not just meeting the spec, but it's exceeding the spec that it is actually, you're giving them parts where, I love when they call it jewelry, they open up the box and, and, and open it up and they they just pull out jewelry you know and he's that guy man and it, and it's been it's been just such a good ride you know that is I, what it is too when you look at parts that's i there was hamilton company up in reno this old guy jerry raider that i used to call him he goes we don't make parts here we make jewelry i love that and yeah. that's a great it is mm-hmm. it's you it has to look you're yeah. spending a lot of money on those parts. You're doing work for these incredible companies that are relying, like you said, on yeah. you to meet everything that they've given you and to make it look and just especially good. We came to a spot where we're making rocket parts for many different companies, A286 parts, their Hanes 188 parts, their steel parts, and tight tolerances to tents like 0. .0001, right? Hello. And sometimes we would separate them, red tag them, but then we wouldn't have enough parts. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wouldn't have enough mm-hmm. parts. So it's like, it's well, they're only a tenth out. And I would I would be like, this is a $5,000 part. Mm-hmm. This is a $900 part. You know what I mean? That's $1,000. That's $5,000. That's $50,000. And I'm like, I know it's still functional. So I would call these places mm-hmm. and I'd ask them. I'm like, hey, we have this and much good. We have these. They're only a tenth out. Would you still want them and yeah. they'll say yes or i'd even say or you can get these and i'll give them to you for 50 percent off or something yeah, yeah yeah but i was willing to give them yeah, yeah yeah so every time i made a call to say hey we're a tenth out they would have to go and and assemble and instead of talking about jewelry they'd be like these parts are bad yeah right mm-hmm. can we can we go and they would most of the time almost every single time sign them off and mm-hmm. say yeah we're good because they need the parts yeah because they have an assembly and it's only a tenth out but I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but one day 
I just I I think I think I got some crap on from one of the customers and stuff. And and I was just understanding that my guys are great. These guys have the ability. If they if they consistently are out one tenth, they can be consistently intolerant. intolerant. They were accepting that it was still okay. Right. One day I called the entire company and I and I basically just put it down. I just said, look, no more. I'm making no calls ever. If it's a tenth out, it's scrapped. 